This happened years ago, at the turn of the millennia. Air travel had not yet been tarnished, but at least we knew every computer in the world didn't suffer a huge shutdown. Somewhere in between those two events in history, I started working at a little mom and pop sandwich shop for minimum wage just after finishing high school. The job wasn't very demanding, but it was kind of in a bad area. The locals were not always the best people, and we had a lot of very ornery people come in daily. We also had a pretty bad homeless population. I'd been to a few other places that homeless were there, and they were the nicest people in the world. But there where I worked, they seemed very angry. Unfortunately, one of the worst ones seemed to have taken up residence at the store. He seemed pretty harmless, although extremely rude. That wasn't really a problem since he'd come in every day and buy food. No one cared about him sleeping on the sidewalk, just outside the store. My boss tried to cheer him up by giving him free food, but he would just be rude and tell him that he didn't need or want his handouts. Maybe it would have done him a little good to accept it. He wasn't one of those ones who would sit on the side of the road with a sign, begging for any sort of money, and then at the end of the day would go and get into a super expensive car. He was actually homeless, and he spent 90% of his day sleeping out on the sidewalk out front. I figured that if that's the way he wanted it, then whatever. As long as he wasn't harming anyone. One morning after a weekend at home, I came home to find the whole store missing. I had just gotten up, so I had to rub my eyes and then look again. Come to find out, I wasn't dreaming, and the store was actually missing. The whole building was gone, and there was construction equipment out there cleaning the site where it had been. The owner of the store was out there as well, and I frantically asked him what happened. He said over the weekend, the store had just burned down, and this was the cleanup from the fire. I asked him if he was going to rebuild, and he just said no. He didn't have the money to do so, and he was probably done as well. I sat in my car a little bit, jobless, watching my first ever job go up in smoke. During that time, the homeless man who spent 90% of his day in front of the now gone store came up to my window. It was the first time I'd ever seen him show any kind of personality and care for anything. Although still a bit rude and harsh, he asked me what I'd do after this. I told him I'd have to find another job but he said he'd have to find another store to sleep in front of. We got each other's names, although it had been many years. I'd forgotten what it was. Years and many jobs later, I was working at a restaurant. I'd kind of chosen this career path. I'd worked this restaurant for about six months, and I was in my own place now. I lived alone, and I saw my girlfriend about once a week due to work on both our parts. She was working at some storage place across town, and we didn't get together very much. At the end of the day, I clocked out and started to go home. I came home to find all of my doors in my apartment were open. This included the front, back, bathroom, and bedroom doors. Nothing was stolen, and nothing seemed out of place. I was highly suspicious of prankery going on by someone I knew. But I couldn't think of anyone I knew that would take it this far, especially for a little giggle. No one jumped out at me and yelled surprise. So, maybe I guess it wasn't. Maybe it was a poltergeist. I just shut all of my doors and locked them down. I didn't think about changing the locks until the next time it happened, which was the next day. I called a bunch of people and asked them if they knew anything about it. No one knew anything. Once I had changed my locks, I did feel a little safer. I was going to wait until the next time I took a vacation to give anyone keys to the place. Well, after I did that, it didn't happen again. I figured someone who had my keys were lying to me, and that could be anyone. That could even mean that someone got my keys and made copies. 
That could have even meant my landlord was it. At work, I'd feel really unsafe not knowing what was going on at home. It's not like we had affordable security cameras back then on my budget. This gave me horrible anxiety that someone was going to break in and do whatever to my apartment. Well, one day, my fears were confirmed when I came home and saw that my door was kicked in. There was a bunch of huge shoe prints on the door, and the door handle was laying on the ground, looking mangled. I was reluctant to enter my own home, but I did, not really prepared for what I would find. I walked upstairs into my bedroom as an instinct to find something startling. Actually, it was more gross than anything. There in my bed was a familiar old man that had thrown his clothes all over my room and was eating my food in my bed. As I walked into the room, we locked eyes for a moment, and he dropped what he was eating on my sheets. As soon as he realized what was going on, I started yelling asking what he was doing in my house. He got up out of the bed, grabbed something on the floor, and pushed past me in an attempt to make it out the front door. He tripped over something in the hallway, and he went tumbling down the stairs. He wasn't moving after that, so I called the cops and told them what happened in the house. They sent an officer and an ambulance out. The guy was only unconscious, but it was one hell of a story for them, especially when they came in and saw the detail I left out, that his clothes were still on my floor upstairs. When the guy finally came to, I got a good look at him with a more clear mind and remembered who he was. He was the old homeless guy that used to be out in front of the store at my first job. No telling why or how he found me, let alone what he was doing in my house. He was so strung out that he couldn't speak properly anyway. Once he was checked out by the ambulance, and they said he was just fine, the police had me write a report and took him off for breaking and entering. Not his finest moment, I'm guessing. Getting caught red-assed, uh, red-handed, breaking and entering. I've since moved from that place for unrelated reasons. But as far as I know, the guy is gone and out of my life forever. I see no way he could find me where I went this time. There he was again, sitting in the same spot he had been for the last several days. Everything about him was the same. Same sweat-stained blue t-shirt, same torn blue jean shorts, same dirty once-white tennis shoes, and same hard look on his face. I guess that he was about 40-ish, with very short brown hair. He wore a close-shaved beard. I couldn't tell what color his eyes were due to the dark sunglasses. He was very dark tan due to a lot of sun exposure. I work at a restaurant that is open from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., and this guy had occupied one of the benches just outside the door. As I walked in, I told my manager that his favorite bench warmer was waiting on him. He just laughed. I work the diner shift from 4 to 11.30 and our bench warmer is usually gone by then. We have been informed by management that parking spots near the buildings are for customers, and we are the park in the outer areas. Even with the lights on out there, it's dark. As a safety precaution, several of us walk out together after work. One night, we walked out to go into our cars, and as usual I text my boyfriend that I'm on my way home. This time when I tried to start the car, it wouldn't. I tried several times, but nothing. Everyone else had left by now. No one else was around. I called my boyfriend and I told him what happened, and he told me that he'd be there in a few minutes, to stay in the car and lock all the doors. The doors were already locked. As I waited, I could see someone moving in the shadows, slowly making their way there where I was stranded. My heart started beating faster and faster as the shadow moved closer and closer. It was beating so hard that I could hear it in my ears, and I was so scared that I felt sick. Suddenly there was a face in my driver's window asking if I needed help. 
It was him, the bench warmer. I gathered my courage and told him no, but help was coming now. He didn't move for a bit, but then he turned and walked away. Suddenly my passenger side window broke and glass shattered towards me covering everything. My right side burned where the chips had cut me. All I could think of was I was going to die. I tried to open my door, but I was so scared my fingers didn't work. I fumbled for the door handle, but I couldn't find it. When I did, it was too late. He had me by the arm and was squeezing so tight, pain was shooting everywhere. He had a knife and he told me if I didn't cooperate, he'd use it to end me. All those times you heard the bad guys say this, you wonder why the victims don't do something. Well, I'm telling you now, you are too scared to think. He demanded my money, jewelry, and phone, and to do it fast. I handed it all over to him. He stepped out of the car and was swallowed up by the darkness. I sat there half in and half out of the driver's side of the car, crying and shaking so hard. I didn't see or hear my boyfriend arrive. I told him what happened and he called the police. I reported my story and they searched the area but they didn't find anything. I called my manager the next morning and told him what happened and informed him that he could put me on the morning shift or I would quit. Bench warmer hasn't been there since. I used to live in this very small town when I was a lot younger. I'm a female and I'd have to ride an hour to school every morning just to give you an accurate idea of how remote this town really was. Nothing really ever happened in that town since there weren't very many people living there. But there was one guy who lived on top of a hill in an old house. This guy was creepy. He really never left his house. But when he did, there was talk of it. There were lots of younger girls living in this town, and a few of them were my friends. So when something happened to them, I'd hear about it through the grapevine as well. I'd heard about this guy living atop the hill, but I'd never seen him myself. I only knew his description since it seemed to happen a lot, but I'd never had an encounter with him before this. I was at our town's local library hanging out with a bunch of other high schoolers. We really had no other place to be other than there. One of those times, the guy from the hill came out of his house to pray. He showed up at the library for some reason. I thought it was weird that a grown man would just stop and try to hang out with a bunch of teens, but we all tried to ignore him. He seemed to be content just being there with us. And I don't know about anyone else, but I felt uncomfortable with him just standing there staring. That's all he did for a little while, until some of us started clearing out. At one point, it was just me and another friend of mine, both of us girls left. He started trying to talk to us in the most creepy way possible. He targeted me for some reason, and started trying to find out who I was. I told him at first that I didn't talk to guys four times my age, but that didn't seem to deter him any. My friend got up and slipped away while the guy was trying to corner me. He ended up successfully cornering me and getting more and more personal with what he was saying. I noticed then that I was the only one left and started looking for an escape. Finally, I just got too uncomfortable and didn't care anymore. I called him a weirdo creep and pushed past him, knocking him to the ground and running off. I started looking around for anyone I could find that had left me back there with him. I couldn't find any of them. I saw the guy looking around for me while chasing me down and thought that he was going to try to kidnap me and bring me back to his den. Obviously I didn't want that, so I decided to run into the nearby DMV office and tell the first person I saw that there was a creepo after me. The guy behind the counter walked out with me to see if he could spot the guy, and he did. He recognized him from previous encounters that he had had with him. Apparently this guy was famous around here for being a creep and preying on young girls, 
So the guy opted to finish his shift, which was about an hour long, and then take me home. I absolutely didn't let my parents know any of this. Because for the creep guy, they wouldn't have let me go back out with my friends. And they would have probably been pissed off about the fact that some other rando guy brought me home. The big difference between these two guys, though, was the fact that one was a decent person who cared about the well-being of others, and the other was a perv who didn't. I did see that creep a few more times while I was living in that small town, but he was creeping on other girls. It's a wonder why someone didn't put a stop to him, but then again, maybe they thought what I did. Being in a small town, if someone were to retaliate on him, there's no telling what he might do. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind Who is that you? Behind